exponential functions can be used to model compound interest for loans and bank accounts. Suppose you invest $200 in a bank account that earns 3% interest every year. If you make no deposits or withdrawals, how much money will you have accumulated after 10 years? Because 3% of the money that's in the bank is getting added each year, the money in the bank gets multiplied by 1.03 each year. So after one year, the amount will be 200 times 1.03 after two years, 200 times 1.03 squared, and, and after t years, 200 times 1.03 to the t power. So the function modeling the amount of money, I'll call it p of t, is given by 200 times 1.03 to the t. More generally, if you invest a dollars at an annual interest rate of r for t years, in the end, you'll have p of t equals a times 1 plus r to the t. Here, r needs to be written as a decimal, so 0 0.03 in our example for the 3% annual interest rate. Going back to our specific example, after 10 years, the amount of money is going to be p of 10, which is 200 times 1.03 to the 10, which works out to $268.78 to the nearest cent. In this problem, we've assumed that the interest accumulates once per year. But in the next few examples, we'll see what happens when the interest rate accumulates more frequently, twice a year, or every month, for example. Let's deposit $300 in an account that earns 4.5% annual interest compounded semi-annually. This means two times a year, or every six months. A 4.5% annual interest rate compounded two times a year means that we're actually getting 4.5 over 2% interest every time the interest is compounded, that is, every six months. That's 2.25% interest every half a year. Note that 2.25% is the same as 0 0.0225 as a decimal. So every time we earn interest, our money gets multiplied by 1.0225. Let me make a chart of what happens. After zero years, which is also zero half years, we have our original $300. After half a year, that's one half year, our money gets earns interest one time, so we multiply the 300 by 1.0225. After one year, that's two half years, our money earns interest two times. So we multiply 300 by 1.0225 squared. Continuing this way, after 1.5 years, that's three half years, we have 300 times 1.0225 cubed, and after two years, or four half years, we have 300 times 1.0225 to the fourth. In general, after t years, which is 2t half years, our money will grow to 300 times 1.0225 to the 2t power, because we've compounded interest 2t times. Our formula for our amount of money is p of t equals 300 times 1.0225 to the 2t, where t is the number of years. To finish the problem, after seven years, we'll have p of seven dollars, which is 300 times 1.0225 to the two times seven, or 14 power, and that works out to $409.65 to the nearest cent. In this next example, we're going to take out a loan for $1,200 at an annual interest rate of 6% compounded monthly. Although loans and bank accounts might feel different, they're mathematically the same 
it's like from the bank's point of view, they're investing money in you and getting interest on their money from you. So we can work them out with the same kind of math. 6% annual interest rate compounded monthly means you're compounding 12 times a year. So each time you compound interest, you're just going to get 6 over 12% interest. That's 0.5% interest. And as a decimal, that's 0 0.005. Let's chart out again what happens. Times 0, of course, you'll have the original loan amount of 1,200. After one year, that's 12 months, your loan has had interest added to it 12 times. So it gets multiplied by 1.005 to the 12th. After two years, that's 24 months, it's had interest added to it 24 times. So it gets multiplied by 1.005 to the 24th power. Similarly, after three years, or 36 months, your loan amount will be 1,200 times 1 1.005 to the 36th power. And in general, after t years, that's 12 t months. So the interest will be compounded 12 t times. And so we have to raise the 1.005 to the 12 t power. This gives us the general formula for the money owed is P of T equals 1,200 times 1 1.005 to the 12 T, where T is the number of years. In particular, after three years, we'll have to pay back a total of 1,200 times 1 1.005 to the 12 times 3, or 36 power, which works out to $1,436.02 to the nearest cent. These last two problems follow a general pattern. If A is the initial amount of the loan or bank account and R is the annual interest rate compounded N times per year, then our formula for the amount of money is going to be A times 1 plus R over N to the NT. This formula exactly matches what we did in this problem. First, we took the interest rate R, which was 6%, and divided it by the number of compounding periods each year, 12. We wrote that as a decimal and added 1 to it. That's where we got the 1.005 from. We raised this to not to the number of years, but to 12 times the number of years. That's the number of compounding periods per year times the number of years. And we multiplied all that by the initial amount of money, which was 1,200. This formula for compound interest is a good one to memorize, but it's also important to be able to reason your way through it, like we did in this chart. There's one more type of compound interest, and that's interest compounded continuously. You can think of continuous compounding as the limit of compounding more and more frequently. 10 times a year, 100 times a year, 1,000 times a year, a million times a year. In the limit, you get continuous compounding. The formula for continuous compounding is P of t equals A times e to the rt, where P of t is the amount of money, t is the time in years, a is the initial amount of money, and R is the annual interest rate written as a decimal. So 0.025 in this problem from the 2.5% annual interest rate. E represents the famous constant, Euler's constant, which is about 2.718. So in this problem, we have P of T is 4,000 times E to the 0.025 T. And after five years, we'll have P of 5, which is 4,000 
times e to the 0 0.025 times 5, which works out to $4,532.59 to the nearest cent. To summarize, if R represents the annual interest rate, written as a decimal, that is 2% would be 0 0.02, and T represents the number of years, and A represents the initial amount of money, then for just simple annual interest compounded once a year, our formula is P of T is A times 1 plus R to the T. For compound interest, compounded n times per year, our formula is P of t is a times 1 plus r over n to the nt. And for compound interest compounded continuously, we get P of t is a times e to the rt. In this video, we looked at three kinds of compound interest problems. Simple annual interest, interest compounded n times per year, and continuously compounded interest.